Hey guys, today we are going to talk about a lot of issues, but mainly why I believe Magic the Gathering is declining and failing. Uh, there are many reasons for this, but I have recently stumbled upon probably the best example of a company that is more set on politics than they are on des designing, delivering a high quality product. Now, of course, as in the video, we need to bookend it with funny wedge tweets or uh, tweets about wedge. So I'll have another one at the very end that you've already seen, but I think it's still kind of funny. So let's read what Wizard of Coast believes in, in hiring, what they look for when they hire someone. I would love to see more women in Magic R&D. Please share these links with as many women or those identified as women as those who are non-binary as possible. So, yep, um, what jobs are we retweeting, can you imagine? Now, I would say that we would, as a company, you wanna hire the most qualified position, po person for that position as possible, uh, whether regardless of gender, and targeting a certain job for a certain gender, if it was reverse, would actually be discrimination. Um, so if it was, hey, I have a job, uh, Google recently got in trouble for this, um, I have a job as a developer, and I think males are better developers than females, which I don't believe that. My CTO is actually a developer, and she's better than I am as a develop developer side, but she's terrible at sales. So you, I mean, you would be in trouble. Uh, such a big company like Google is in trouble for saying that. But if you say the reverse, like what is it the coast is saying here, hey, are you interested in uh, being a game designer and you're female? Well, welcome, welcome. Oh, are you male? Oh, no, no, we don't need any more males in game design, even if you did an excellent product for us. And of course, we have the wording, women are those who identify as women imply that they are separate groups, which they are not. They are the same. It might be better to redo the tweet without invalidating identify as. You are so right. I don't want to delete the tweet. It already has retweets, but I will tweet again. Thank you for letting me know. I, I'm just going to strictly read these uh, tweets from now on because I don't, what I can say will be taken very, somebody's gonna take it and mostly probably Emma. So Emma, if you didn't know, actually uh, wrote for Pojo back in the day. Um, she has an interesting article. I'll just leave it at that. Hmm, how about if you want a job, go for it. Not just because of sex, Shaking my head, that being like a farmer picking a wolf to watch his herd and wondering why it does end well. Uh, so hopefully maybe hire people on skills and not because of sex. I'd rather have people who are competent in game design and gameplay in R&D than just arbitrarily choosing someone solely based on their gender. Now you might be like, oh, well, does Wizard of Coast really do this? And I would point to all the promoted Wizard of the Coast uh, female uh, content producers. So we got cosplayers, Nissa Cosplay. We had Christine Sprankles, who was promoted heavily, although not paid properly. That's another issue. I mean, what, whether or not they got paid is another issue, right? But just promotion, we had the Emma. Emma is now in Vintage Super League. We had Alex Bracini's girlfriend, Rachel, who has been on all over YouTube channels. Uh, all over Magic Ca Gathering's official YouTube channel, although Alex Bocchini is continuing to cheat uh, people as we speak, probably. And who else? We had the Maria and the other Maria, I feel like. I feel like there's two Marias. Uh, we had Gabby, of course, Gabby Sparts. We have, um, I, I, feel, I feel like I miss, I think, no, one of them is not named Maria. Um, but anyway, my point is, if you look at who's being promoted on a daily basis on their YouTube channel, you can count that as a representation of our community, which I would assume is 70, 80% males, it's not 70, 80% males, it's 
Tolarian and uh, Weds, and then like a few streamers. And oh, streamers, of course. If if you go on the streaming competitions, half the people streaming are and being promoted are females, but are really half the Magic streamers females? Who knows? I, actually, I do know, and it is not. I'd like to see more qualified people in R&D. How about trying to find those instead of ticking boxes that you think need to be checked? How about Wizard Coast just hires whoever is the best qualified, regardless of whether they have a blank or a blank? Where are my masculine presenting transgender legends? Okay, so probably should not read that one. Um, anyway, my point is very simple. Uh, it is, you don't really have, it's the Garuk syndrome, where you don't really have like, um, uh, aggressive male, right? Like in, okay, I'm, I'm going to get, no, I'm trying to stay out of trouble. So I'm just going to continue to retweet. I would love to be hired for my skills and not my blank. God, I hope this isn't what I have to look forward to when I finish my AAS. What you love is completely irrelevant. You should only care about what your customers love. Oh, huh, customers, huh? So side note, we're going to go on tangent. One MTG headquarter is worth probably 100,000 wedges in terms of money. So wedge takes money from Magic players to travel and pay hospital expenses. This is money that otherwise would go back into Magic, right? These are Magic players he's taking money from. Yet Wizards of the Coast is going to promote people like Wedge because they want these, uh, their, their model is incorrect. Uh, the model is not correct because they're assuming that Wedge is going to bring in more people, but he's only bringing in more people to donate to him. So how many, how many people on Reddit actually buy a booster box? According to Reddit itself, it's zero. It is zero of them. And why do we have to, why should we bend over back? Why would a company bend over backwards to help people who don't buy their product. And why would they attack, 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 ban for life someone who spends, I don't know what Jeremy spent, 50,000 would you say? Uh, he spent 10,000 on M Magic Online and he opens a lot of product. He buys a lot of new products to open. He goes to pre-release at a local game store. Imagine that wedge, right? You're not buying a local game store. I know you don't have one of those. Uh, but yeah, anyway, okay, going back to reading. Okay, so I'm in Brisbane, Australia. Is it possible to work remotely without relocating a USA? Oh my gosh, are you? Mm. Okay, so let's say we had an awesome game designer and he lives in the back of your woods and he's a male. They would rather hire a female from Australia to work remotely to do work from home remotely with probably no experience in game design, no record, no past history of designing games than this male. And you think I'm kidding you. You think I'm kidding you. But um, consider Tolarian Community College and how he views this, which is very similar to Wizard of the Coast because they are aligned perfectly. So he had the option. He hosted this show called, um, what was that show called? It had the, the two Maria's. I forget, one of them was named Maria, and the other one was named some uh, Megan. Okay, it was Maria and Megan, and they had their own show on his channel, which was very strange, but they had their own channel as well, and their own social media, for the longest time, and, to, and then Tolarian's videos would always get downvoted by Tolarian fans, because they, they want to see Tolarian, not these random people that pop in a video once a week. How did he come to that? How did he choose them? They weren't very big at the time. Uh, they were just starting out. They don't really talk about magic all that much. Uh, they talk about their personal lives a lot and their politics. How does, how does Tolarian choose them as the most qualified uh, to host on his channel? And I'm sure that anyone would be very blessed to even receive a shout out, but it's pretty much a two hour sponsorship a video once a week. Hmm, what qualifications did Tolarian Community College look at? I would argue the same qualifications that Wizard of Coast is currently looking at. Now, I don't know that for fact, but it seems very strange, right? Uh, it seems very strange. Uh, and 
it's just numbers, right? So let me let me play this way for you. I do I work with data on uh, and analytics every single day. So when you see a pattern, you can take advantage of it and you can sell more cards, more yoga mats, whatever I'm selling that day. There is a pattern here that does not resonate with the customers. The from the marketing perspective, the customers are likely to be white males. This is fact. But from the promotion perspective, from the cards to um, the, the card art to the people they're promoting to the uh, events they host, who's hosting them to the content creators that are being pushed, very few of the marketing dollars goes towards this demographic. And you might say, oh, maybe they're expanding, right? They want to expand into these other groups to make more revenue. I would say that that's fine. And yes, they should do that, but they have gone an extra step. So MTG headquarters is a white male. They have banned him, banned for life. So they are not only expanding on the, let's say minority groups, trying to make it popular among those groups, they are discriminating and banning and take and attacking the, their customer base over and over again. Um, like if I asked you to name me one content creator supported by Wizard of Coast, who is, I don't quote, quote, a strong male figure, uh, meaning like a Elon Musk, a Mark Zuckerberg, a Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs goes on rampages all the time, right? Uh, I'll, I'll throw him out there, a Donald Trump, a Bill Gates. There are content creators who are very strong individuals who are successful, who have made lots of money, like maybe a Rudy. And they are not being promoted by the mothership at all. I wonder why that is. Bye, guys.